Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Tell you what, YouTube posters, if you posted some videos, leave them up. Do not take them down. Because you never know when somebody's going to discover them or rediscover them. Uh, there's some great content providers out there. Runeslinger, Null Inquisitor, Samwise 7 RPG. Um, uh, unfortunately, Samuel G took a bunch of his videos down back when he made them before, which I, I would love to have seen him because I, I see them getting referenced. Don't feel bad, dude, but I'm just saying. would love to have seen them. Uh, CGA puts a bunch, a bunch of good videos. Robert the Narrator. Um, Go on and on. Lots of good stuff out there. So don't take your videos down. Even if you think it's not relevant anymore, somebody might discover this stuff. So I've been watching Runeslinger's Main Ideas series again. And I actually just moved on to the Simulation series. And I haven't watched these in some time. I think I, think I watched them the first time maybe like a year ago-ish. And I've noticed that I have some different perspectives now. I don't think I missed anything before. But having had a chance to think about these things, uh, do some application, watch as I'm gaming having some time to think about it and reflect on some of the things I've done that I've seen other people do, my past, more things jumped out at me. And one of the things that I was thinking about as I was watching this, and I forget which video it was, I was thinking about uh, the really popular games out there, the ones that are really popular right now that, that have the lion's share of the market. I don't need to name them. Uh, well, maybe they're fifth edition Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder. I think they're still like big market leaders. They're not bad games. They're not for me. But sometimes you, you see channels of uh, YouTube content providers or what have you, and there's people that are really champions of these games, maybe they're really popular channels, and sometimes you wonder if these people are just playing the wrong game. Because they're, they tend to play it in a kind of narrative, story-driven manner, where you wonder, like, you know, the game doesn't really have mechanics to support this. They're, I don't think they're doing anything wrong, so to speak, but there's other games out there that do it better, what, what they're trying to do better. It's not a value judgment. And if you like gaming like that, this is not about uh, the one true way to game. I'm just talking about what works for me. And so nothing here that I'm going to say is a value judgment. I'm going to talk about what works for me, but more importantly, like what doesn't work for me. And so I started thinking about um, falsifying die rolls, about fudging. I'm not talking about these, these little dice. I'm not talking about fudge dice. I have nothing against fudge. I enjoyed playing that game with JDRD30 at BrigadeCon a year ago, BrigadeCon 2016. Looking forward to BrigadeCon 2017, as well as RPG A Day 2017, coming up in August. Participate. And uh, I, I like the mechanics so much. I wasn't not sure if I like the game, like the system, but I like the mechanics so much I went and bought some of these dice. Maybe one day Red Dice Diaries will convince me to play some Fate. We'll see what happens. But uh, another, another great channel, by the way. Anyhow, this video has nothing to do with that mechanic. It's about cheating, about lying, about altering game world reality. Sometimes you alter when the, the universe speaks through these little bad boys. And oh, I didn't like that result. It wasn't cool. It wasn't epic. Something was wrong with that result. It was unsatisfactory. So I alter it. I fudge a die roll. Or I invoke the quantum ogre. You know, I put people went left. There was something right I wanted them to interact with. So I just move it over to the left. Or it's like you have an encounter. It's a really classic example where you realize all of a sudden, oh man, the challenge these uh, the party's facing, the monster, the bad guy, the NPCs, they're, they're a lot stronger than you thought they were. And there might be a TPK or, or people might start dying. Things might go horribly wrong and you, you weaken the adversary. Or the other side where you're like, oh, this is not epic enough. They're gonna kill this guy in about two rounds. I'm gonna have some more minions or, or beef up their stats. That's very common. You see people talk about this in these channels where they're playing these popular games. And, you know, to me, I've done these things, not a lot, but I've done them. But any, every time that I've fudged, that I've changed game world reality in one way or another, to me, that's associated with some guilt and shame. Not the kind where I'm going to go jump off a bridge, <laughs> so don't get worried about me. But I've always felt like, hey, man, I really, it, it just felt bad. Like, it felt wrong. I didn't want to do that. You know, when I play, I want my choices to mean something. I want to have some level of agency. And I talk about the idea that I'm, I'm in charge of what my player does, thinks, says, and feels. And I want my decisions to mean things. I want the game world to be consistent, to not, for reality not to change on a whim, whether it's mine or the, the game masters or the other players. Um, and when I'm running a game, I'd rather that the players' decisions and choices, and the, their characters' decisions and choices, their actions, that they mean something. And so I don't want to have a pre-planned story. Uh, I talked to Tim Harper a long time ago, well, maybe maybe a year ago, whenever we did that hangout together, that it's on his uh, channel, that uh, one of the uh, traps we can fall into as game masters, that I can fall into occasionally, is we get married and emotionally invested in these cool ideas we had. Now, I don't, don't necessarily have a cool idea for a story or a story arc. 
you know, what I what I found those those moments where I have fudged, where I have cheated, where I have altered game world reality and felt guilt and shame, it was because there was this cool scene, this cool idea, this cool moment, this cool thing I wanted to have happen. Not the whole story, but just one thing. I was like, man, that'd be really cool if that happened. And when the players have edged away from that, or when the universe is spoken and it's not going the way I wanted it to, that I've gently or not so gently nudged things back towards this one cool moment. It's always felt wrong. I didn't never felt good about doing that, and sometimes the players have noticed that, and that's even worse because they're like, "Hey, dude, that wasn't cool." Uh, fortunately, I don't do that now. I've noticed, you know, and I'll talk about you know what's what's what I've noticed now, and it's a much more subtle and much more inadvertent. The times that I've rolled and fudged die rolls, primarily, I was thinking about like, why have I done this? Was it a friendship? Anthony actually had like a t teeny chat via messenger. Uh, was it uh, irritation? Was it to move the story forward? The times where I fudge that, it's generally like when another player is about to die or something very, very bad is going to happen to that character. And I thought about it, like, when were the times I did that? I usually tended to be with these players, having the benefit of hindsight, that would not have been okay with meaningless character death. They wanted, they wanted their characters to mean more than that. They wanted something to be more epic and more grand. And sometimes these were players I could already tell were not 100% satisfied with the game. And I believe now, looking back, it was probably a clash of play styles, a class, clash of intentions, a clash of motivations. What do they want out of the game? What did I want out of the game? I think we, we, think we had a different play style. I, I lacked the words to express that at the time. Maybe they did too. But I could tell they were already a little bit um, dissatisfied, and I didn't want to upset them further. So I coddled them a little bit. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I should have let the... Uh, oh, sorry, dude, your character's dead. Uh, and, and moved on and been more honest and, and forthright about my play style. But these are things that we, we didn't do much of a session zero back then. So I think those are the big times I've done that. Probably, probably you know, like I said, the more egregious ones is when I've moved uh, the story in the direction I want it to. I want to make this one little cool thing happen. Um, I really haven't done things to like move the story forward or to keep it going, you know, this pre-planned arc. I don't believe so. What I've noticed lately is, I don't, I don't believe it's fudging, but it, but the things that still evoke guilt and shame, this, the times uh, in this session of All for One I ran, where I didn't allow Null Inquisitor to make this really Hail Mary roll, where he probably had no chance. I think if I actually worked out the, uh, the ubiquity mathematics with chance dice, I might have like a 2, 3, 4% chance of success. I should let him roll. And I didn't think of letting him invoke the mechanic. When Anthony was chasing the, uh, the demon guy, I probably should have allowed him some more roles because I was um, operating under this preconceived notion that he was a demon and he was more powerful based on my D&D &D roots than he really was on paper. And, you know, I don't think, it, I think it was inadvertent, but I believe I removed some agency. And, you know, having the benefit of hindsight, looking at that thing, and, okay, I, I guess I did. So, to a very, very brief level, I fudged a little bit. And so that brings about some guilt and shame. I don't. I want their decisions to mean something. I want the players, their characters, their decisions to be meaningful. Uh, whether the consequences are good or bad, I want them to be able to shape the game world via their uh, in-game decisions and actions. And should the universe speak? Maybe it, it speaks, uh, well, maybe, maybe you don't like it. Maybe, maybe Cervantes dies. Oh, well. And maybe Dim dies. Maybe Duras runs up and he's going to hit the Earth Elemental one time with his magic staff and then run back to safety and no, the Earth Elemental kills him and yeah, he dies. Maybe Philippe runs up and he's probably going to get wasted by the Wendigo. He's on his last legs and the Dice Gods are merciful and the Wendigo dies and the Musketeers do not. The universe has spoken. But we were able to make real decisions and they had real consequences and sometimes we invoke the universe. Oh, look at that, all the pluses. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. The universe was kind that time. So I want my choices to mean things, to be meaningful as a player. I want my players' choices to be meaningful. Every time that I have, um, intentionally or inadvertently, and it can be easy, self-deception, it can be really easy to, to mask sometimes or to, uh, to justify. Self-deception can be hard to spot, I think is what I was trying to say. So it, it pays sometimes for me to look and see, what, you know, what were my motivations here? Did I really give everybody a fair shake? Uh, not that I'm going to lay down on the psychiatrist's couch, but I want the players in my games to have uh, meaningful decisions. 
have agency. And when I take agency away, I feel a level of guilt and shame. So I try not to do that. So I already know, I'm guessing, I'm not psychic, but I know like what some of my frequent watchers and commenters, I can guess who's going to post what. And like I said, this is not a value judgment. If you do these things, if this is how you play your game and you're okay with this um, more narrative or more, more, con more controlled structure, uh, that's cool. It doesn't work for me, but if it works for you, that, that's cool. So I'd love to hear your comments, your ideas, your thoughts. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts about all this? But that's my little ditty on guilt and shame and fudging and, I guess, simulationism.